Welcome. If you're just signing on, we're going to use a blanket and a block today or some sort of beach towel or a book that you can stand on in case you have a household item that's not quite a block but will work. And start on your back. So you'll lie with your hips and your head on the slippery surface and your knees bent and the soles of your feet on the, on the floor on the sticky surface. And as you allow your arms to rest wherever it's comfortable, take a few moments to scan around your room and notice the light, colors, textures. Feel free to turn your head and look around using a little bit of movement, not only of your eyes, but also of your body to orient yourself in space. And as you listen, you might notice that some sounds are a little closer to you and other sounds are a little farther away. As you bring your attention to your skin, your skin is one of the ways you sense into your environment, but it also connects you to what's happening inside your body. And so as you feel into your skin, notice the places where your body connects to the floor below you. and identify where those connections feel firm in their characteristics and their quality. And notice where the connections feel soft. And also sense into where there is space between you and the floor. And notice how the firm, soft, and space all support you in some way. Now, bring your attention to the soles of your feet. And can you sense in the soles of your feet where there is a firm connection, where there is a soft connection, and where there's space. And start to move your feet by pressing your heels into the earth and lifting the tops of your feet and your toes up towards your shins. Now do the opposite. Bring the balls of your feet and your toes to the floor and lift your heels off the floor. And do this a couple times. Heels press down, fronts of feet lift towards your shins, almost like you're pulling your foot off a gas pedal. Tip your balls of your feet into the floor and lift the heels as if you're wearing a pair of high heels or stilettos. And as you do that a couple times, feel the rocking of your feet and your knees, but pay particular attention to the connection of the soles of your feet and the floor. And notice what it feels like in the heel, how there's some firmness when you really push your heel down and lift the balls of your feet. And notice how when you push to the balls of your feet, there's a firmness and a softness as you grip your toes and the balls of the feet into the floor. And as you keep rocking in that way, Sense into how the space between the heels and the balls of the feet does not make as much contact, if any, with the floor. It's the arch of the foot. There's one arch between your big toe and your inner heel, and that one tends to be higher. There's a second arch between your pinky toe and your outer heel. And then there's a third arch that goes across the front of the foot from your big toe to your pinky toe. And it's more under, under the foot rather than on the side of the foot. 
The next time the feet are flat to the floor, you can pause there for a moment. Take your feet so they're a tiny bit wider than hip distance and slowly tip your knees just a little bit to one side, maybe a couple inches. So you feel your feet rock from the outer edge to the inner edge and the inner edge to the outer edge. It's kind of like windshield wipers, but they get stuck after they start to move. And as you do that, noticing the connection of your feet to the floor and how the one side of the foot will press into the floor as the other side of your foot lifts a little bit away from the floor. Now exaggerate that tipping so the windshield wipers go in their full range of motion. Knees tipping comfortably to one side as far as they'll go without strain and comfortably to the other side as far as they'll go without strain. And notice how the feet roll across the floor and feel into the way that the connections that feel firm change as you move, the connections that feel soft change as you move, and where there is space also changes as you move. As you do this a couple more times, you can have your arms out to the sides and start to turn your head opposite of your knees. But even as your head moves, can you keep your attention really focused into your feet? Inviting that rocking side to side movement and feedback. And next time your knees are in the center, pause there. You can leave your arms out to the sides. Inhale, tilt your tailbone into the floor so your low back lifts in a little bit of a back bend shape. Exhale, scoop your tailbone towards your knees and press your low back to the floor. And do this a couple times. Inhale, press your feet down. Imagine you're trying to drag your feet or your mat towards your hips. Mine actually slid a little bit. Exhale, scoop by pushing your feet away from you, tailbone towards your knees. And do that a couple times. Inhale, try to pull your feet towards your hips. Exhale, push your feet away from your hips. And notice how this push and pull from your feet creates a wave that moves up your spine, even slightly tipping your head and your neck a little bit. I was thinking this morning about foundation and how really getting to know the things that support us, whether they be physically the earth when we're standing and walking and doing yoga, or whether they be our family, our friends, our practices like yoga or meditation or being out in nature. How and where do we connect to support and what are the qualities of support? And so I thought we would experiment with the feet as the focus and of the inquiry, what connects me to ground and to support. As you finish this wave-like pattern, you might consider for yourself how your feet are a foundation that you don't have to think much about, but the times that you do can be really helpful. As you finish this rocking movement, roll to one side and transition so you're coming into the table position. And here you can fold up your blanket and set it to the side. And place your hands on the earth. So just as we focused on the feet, take a moment to really spread the fingers wide and feel the lift in the center of the palm, kind of like the arches of your feet. As you press the fingertips down, tuck your toes under and lift your knees for a downward facing dog. You can think of this as being an upside down V shape or a triangle. And do a little walking here of your dog where you bend one knee and press opposite heel down and emphasize what it feels like to walk your feet. In a way, the shape that they're making now is very similar to what you did when you had your knees bent and you started exaggerating the 
balls of the feet lifting off the floor and then the heels lifting off the floor. When one knee is bent, that foot is kind of like your high heel or stiletto foot. And when the knee is straight-ish and the heel presses down, that's almost like you're moving the, the foot off the gas pedal. But because of how weight is over the legs, it feels really different than when you did it earlier. Now, really slowly trying to sense as much of the sole of the foot connection into the floor as possible, take little steps the length of your big toe and very slowly begin to walk your feet towards your hands. So you're really exaggerating the way the feet move as you walk forward. Now at some point, you're gonna have to lift your hands a bit off the floor to keep walking your feet forward. And so just notice whenever that is for you. Sometimes I come up onto my tippy fingers to give myself a little space. And then eventually my hands will come off the floor altogether and or knees bend a lot so that you have a little bit more space to walk yourself to the front of your mat. Again, try to keep your steps only the length of your big toe so it's really slow, small steps. Once you get to the top of your mat, keep your knees bent, have your feet hip distance apart and fold in towards your legs. When you fold in towards your legs, notice, would it be helpful for you to take your feet even wider apart? So that gives you some extra room between your legs. Maybe your torso feels more comfortable there. As you keep your knees bent, push down into the soles of the feet. You can use your blocks to support your tippy fingers a little bit. Can you lean forward and then exaggerate the weight coming into the balls of the feet so your heels might even lift off the floor? like the stilettos or the high heels. Lower your heels down. Can you lean back a little bit so the fronts of your feet maybe lift a tiny bit off the floor? And try that rocking of the feet here a couple times, just like you did in that position where you were lying on your back and in the walking forward from your downward facing dog to this position. Next time balls of feet and heels are on the floor, let yourself hang a bit again. And if it's comfortable for your body, very slowly, taking at least two, maybe even three breaths, roll your spine up to standing. And you might exaggerate pushing more into one foot and leaning a little bit to one side as you slowly roll yourself up to standing. When you reach standing, adjust your feet so they're approximately his hip distance apart. Let your arms rest by your sides. Push into the balls of the feet and imagine you're trying to grip a fist of your toes into the floor. It almost feels like the arches of your feet from your toes to your heels are sh shortening or pulling towards one another. Now as you grip your toes into the floor, lift your heels off the floor like you're standing on tippy toes to peer over a fence. Lower your heels in super slow motion back to the floor and see if it's possible to lean back and lift the fronts of the feet. That always makes me feel like I'm gonna fall over. So my arms do this wavy business to keep me from falling over. Go back to the heel lift. Again, like you're peering over the top of a fence, you can even Stick your hands up and nose yourself over. And then heels press down, balls of feet lift. Do that forward and backward a few times, seeing if it's possible to slow the descent of your heels, because gravity will make it challenging to go slow. Now the next time balls of feet and heels are on the floor, stay there, inhale, chair pose, bend your knees, sweep your arms up. Exhale, return to standing. Do this a few more times. Inhale, chair pose, root through heels and fronts of feet. Exhale, return to standing. Notice if you favor your heels or the balls of your feet with more weight as you come into and out of the chair pose on the wings of your breath. I like to think of this as a golden eagle floating into and out of the chair pose. 
Now the next time you're in the chair, hover there. You can take your arms lower or out to the sides if that feels better for your shoulders. Now can you grip your toes into the floor and make a fist with the feet again? And in your chair pose, lift your heels off the floor. Now could you stay here for a couple seconds? And then maybe extend it for a few breaths. And if the answer is, nah, that doesn't work for me, bring your heels down. You can stay in chair as long as it works for you. Slowly lower heels to floor. As you do so, fold towards your feet like a little bow. Inhale, lift your torso halfway. And exhale, step back to downward facing dog. In your downward facing dog, let your heels float a bit off the floor so that you can lengthen from the sides of your waist to your shoulders. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Do that a couple times, sensing into your feet and your ankles, noticing the positioning of your feet as you shift forward and backward into plank. The next time you're in plank pose, hold it. Keep breathing, but find a feeling of steadiness in the shape here. Can you press your heels back towards the wall behind you? Like you're gonna shoot little laser beams out of your heels psh, psh, towards the wall. You can do the sound effect again. Psh, psh. Keeping that backward movement of the heels, you can either take your knees down or keep your legs straight and lower in chaturanga slow motion coming down towards the earth. Inhale, cobra, and exhale, downward facing dog. Let's do that same pattern again, paying particular attention to how your feet help to support you. Inhale, plank, grip your toes into the floor, shoot the heels towards the wall behind you. Lower chaturanga, either knees down or straight legs. Point your toes, press the tops of your feet down. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, tuck toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up towards the sky and make a couple circles with your right ankle for three-legged dog. Continue to push through your hands and the foot that's on the floor. Go the other direction with your circles. Bring right foot to the floor, do the left side. Inhale, left leg reaches up towards the sky, make some circles with your ankle. Go the other direction. Bring your foot down. Inhale, lift heels, look forward. Exhale, step or walk your feet to the front of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Push through your feet, lift for the sky. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, arms by your sides. So keep your feet about hip distance apart. Bend your knees, take your hands to your knees and trace some circles with your knees. But even though the knees are the ones that are doing the big movements, feel into the soles of your feet. And notice how you're rocking in a circle around the soles of your feet. Now go the other direction. And again, bring attention to the soles of your feet. I don't know if you can hear how creaky the floor is. <laughs> Maybe you have that memories of that from being in the classroom here. But as you go in these circle patterns, just and change directions when it feels good to you and feel into how your feet connect to the floor. Now push strongly into your feet and we'll come back up to standing. Inhale, chair pose, bend your knees, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen forward. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. I have to fix my ponytail here. From your downward facing dog, inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up towards the sky. 
Exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. Lower your knee down. Here's where you'll find it helpful to have your block to step on and blanket under your back knee. So take your front foot on the block and have your back knee on the blanket. So you're doing the low lunge with the front foot elevated. Now for this, I like to take my hands to my front thigh, but you can lift your arms up if that feels good. As you press down through the sole of your front foot, can you sense into the center of the heel, the base of your big toe and the base of your pinky toe? I'd like you to imagine that your foot is a tripod. And as much as it's possible for you, you're gonna make the three legs of the tripod as even as you can. If it's possible, really push through the center of the heel and the base of the big toe and pinky toe equally. Now, if it's comfortable for you, take your right hand to your right hip and side bend to the right, reaching your left arm up and overhead. And notice how by leaning to the side, you make it a bit more challenging to keep that front foot steady on the floor. It tends to want to rock to the pinky edge. Inhale, back up right. Exhale, carefully navigate yourself off your block. And we'll change sides. So back to downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg reaches for the ceiling, three-legged dog. Exhale, step your left foot forward, right knee to the blanket, front foot on the block, or whatever book or lift you're giving yourself here. Now as you push down through the block, what do you notice in the hips? Maybe it feels good for you to keep hands on front thigh and create a little bit of lift in your spine. Perhaps you want to reach up from the sideways, bringing arms to the ceiling. As we did on the first side, sense into the tripod of your front foot, the center of the heel, the base of your big toe, the base of your pinky toe. Now, can you sense, as you push into those three legs of your tripod, can you sense into the arches that lift between them and connect them? the arch between your big toe and your inner heel, the arch between your pinky toe and your outer heel, and the arch that connects your big toe to your pinky toe. Take your left hand to your left hip and side bend to the left. As you reach over to the side, chances are it's gonna shift weight to the pinky edge of your front foot. Can you focus more on keeping the tripod even? between the three legs, big toe, pinky toe, center of heel. Inhale, back up right, exhale, carefully lower both hands inside front foot to step back, downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, optional vinyasa or any combination of stillness and movement. This might be a good time to experiment with a standing forward fold, giving yourself a chance to really press into the soles of your feet and to find the tripod there. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts for the ceiling, three-legged dog. Exhale, step your right foot between your hands. You can move your blanket off to the side. Shorten your stance by bringing your back foot a little closer to your front foot and standing tall, and then Take your block onto the floor and negotiate your front foot on the block and your back foot behind you for high lunge. Now I recommend feet about hip distance apart, especially if you've never practiced with the block before. If it feels good, bring your arms up towards the ceiling and stretch high. Now sense into the tripod of your front foot. Can you press through the center of your heel? the base of your big toe, the base of your pinky toe. On inhale, lift and straighten your front leg a little. Exhale, bend your front knee, sink down again. 
Do that one or two more times, noticing how when you straighten your leg, it's gonna take a little bit more weight into your heel. And when you bend your knee, it takes a little bit more weight into the big doe pinky toe. And try that a couple more times if it's working and you feel stable. On your next exhale, from the high lunge shape, bring your hands to the earth. Probably best to take them both inside your front foot. Bring your back knee to the floor, then step off your block. We'll do the second side from downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg reaches for the ceiling. Exhale, giant step forward, lift into that high lunge. Now shortening your stance is gonna give you some more stability. So grab your block, step your front foot onto the block. Make sure you feel really stable there. So having the foot in the center of the block makes a difference. Feet about hip distance apart. Optional, reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Now really focus on the tripod of your front foot, the center of your heel, the base of your big toe, the base of your pinky toe. Inhale, straighten your front leg. Exhale, re-bend into the lunge. Do this a couple times, sensing into how the tripod of your foot helps to support you, but also noticing how the movement changes where you're able to ground with ease and where you have to work a little bit more to bring focus, to bring attention. As you do this one or two more times, letting your breath and your movement link up. The next time you're in the bent knee position, slowly lower hands towards the earth. It seems like it's really far away, and it is. Bring your back knee down, carefully step off your block. Set your block to the side, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank position. Exhale, chaturanga or any other combination of stillness and movement. I'm doing the cat-cow position here, focusing on breath and spinal movement. You can do chaturanga or anything else that feels good to you. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, reach your right leg up towards the ceiling, three-legged dog. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Imagine your front foot is still on the block and inhale, lift your torso. Exhale, lower your arms down and straighten your front leg. Inhale, bend your front knee and lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, straighten your front leg, float your arms by your waist. Inhale, bend your front knee, lift your arms for the ceiling. Do that once more. This time, when you come into the lunge, turn your chest to one side and reach one arm forward and one arm back. Sweep the arms down the way they came up as you turn forward. Inhale, twist the other direction. Exhale, return to the neutral facing the front. Keep going. Each time you bend your knee, turn to one side. Each time you straighten your leg, turn to center. And pay particular attention to what you're feeling in the front foot and how turning impacts where the weight is in your front foot. And can you prioritize the tripod staying relatively even? even though the movements of your torso make that difficult. The next time you're in the lunge facing forward, float back to downward facing dog and move through your vinyasa, checking in with what you're noticing and what movements or pause would be helpful and useful for you right now. We'll do the second side, starting in down dog. Inhale, lift your left leg up, three-legged dog. Exhale, step forward, high lunge. You can imagine you're on the block. 
Exhale, float your arms down, straighten your front leg. Inhale, bend your front knee, sweep arms by your ears. Exhale, straighten front leg, arms lower down. Inhale, bend your front knee, sweep your arms up. We'll do that again before adding the twist. So each time you bend your knee, turn your torso to one side and sweep your arms out to the sides and up towards your ears. And notice how the turning of your torso changes the way your front foot especially, but also your back foot, support you and connect to the earth. Notice how your breath and movement combine with one another and when it would be helpful to pause and when it feels good to keep moving. The next time you come into the lunge, turn forward without the twisting and exhale downward facing dog. Your choice, some sort of combination of stillness and movement Chaturanga. Another way I like to work the vinyasa is to go right from plank and keep my toes tucked under like plank and press the chest up and forward for upward facing dog. So I basically do plank to up dog, skipping chaturanga. And some days my shoulders and wrists really like that. From your downward facing dog, lift your heels high and ask yourself, would it be fun or interesting or how would I find it to hop my feet to my hands today? And if you have absolutely no interest in doing such things, walk yourself forward. If you're intrigued by such an idea as hopping, bend your knees, look towards your thumbs and hop Maybe like a bunny, a couple hops. Maybe you go for one big one, feet towards hands. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen. Exhale, bend your knees, hinge and fold. Remembering that taking knees wider can be really helpful in creating space. Push through your feet, inhale, reach for the sky. Exhale, arms by your sides, samastitihi. Rest one hand on your heart and one hand on your diaphragm or your belly and observe what's happening on the surface of your skin. You might feel warm. Maybe there's a yoga glow, AKA sweat happening. Can you feel what's happening under your skin? Your heart rate, Maybe blood moving through your tissues, through your heart. The inhale and the exhale. And when you're ready, turn to the side of your mat. So you're going to the long ways and take your feet wide apart. Now turn your heels a little bit in and your toes a tiny bit out. And like you're riding a Clydesdale, a super wide horse, bend your knees. And then do a little bit of a slow motion up and down movement, if that's okay on knees. The more you bend your knees, the more demanding it is on them. So feel free to keep a little higher up. As you continue to push into your feet, can you sense into the tripod of each foot? The base of the big toe, the base of the pinky toe, the center of your heel. And then find a place where it's comfortable for you to hold and bring your arms out to the sky. Tuck your thumbs inside and curl your fingers around them. Now keep holding this shape as you reach your arms wide and make this fist. Take your hands to your hips again. Push and straighten your legs and walk your feet just a little bit closer to one another. Now we're gonna do this part of the movement first. Take your feet so they're parallel to one another. 
Now lift the right foot like you're pulling foot off a gas pedal. Center of heel on the floor. Now turn your right foot out as if you're coming into warrior two and press the foot to the floor. Reverse that, same way you came in. Push the heel down, turn the toes in, foot parallel to the other side. Now do the same thing on the left foot. Peel the ball of the foot up, the center of the heel stays down, the leg and the toes externally rotate, foot comes to the floor. Reverse that. Do it two times on each side, turning out, turning in, going to the other side, and see if you can make it a little bit more fluid of a movement. So it happens with connection rather than with disparate parts. Good, so then from here, pause with your feet parallel, push the center of the heel down and turn your right toes out, now stay there. Now take your left foot, that's the back foot, press the ball of the foot into the floor, lift the heel up a little, and press the heel a tiny bit back so the toes are pointing a little bit forward. Reach your arms out to the sides, bend your front knee and come into the warrior two. If it's helpful, you take your feet a little farther apart. I didn't need to adjust mine there, I just got lucky. Take your right forearm to your right thigh, sweep the top arm over your ear and pause for a moment. Using as much support with your right arm and your right leg as is helpful. Now push and lift up, straightening your front leg. To turn the right toes in, ball of foot lifts, heel is up, turn the foot parallel. Turn the left toes so you're pressing the ball of the foot down, left foot turns in a little so the foot is parallel. Now do the opposite, press your left heel down and turn your left toes out. Press the ball of the right foot down and turn the right heel back with toes forward. Warrior two. Side angle, tip forearm to thigh, reach top arm up and over your ear. And check in with how moving your feet like this and shifting your body weight affects the tripod of each foot. And can you feel the arches of your feet lifted even as you push down through the base of big toe, base of pinky toe, and very center of heel. Press into that front foot. Left heel roots down, toes lift and turn in. Feet parallel. Go back to the right side, right toes turn out. Right heel slides back. This time, bend your front knee, come into that side angle. You could find it helpful to take your front hand to a block as you press your right hand down into shin or block. Slowly straighten your front leg. Bend your front knee. Repeat that a couple times. Press through the three legs of your tripod and press your front leg bent to straight a couple times. And as you pulse that, can you feel the way your front leg pushes you away from the floor? And that's happening from the tripod of your front foot. Whew, lots of work in there. Now, from the trikonasana, reach your top arm up towards the sky and linger for a moment. I like to look at the floor personally. You could look forward if you'd like. As you press through both feet, now that you're pausing to linger for a moment, find the tripod of your back foot. So base of big toe, base of pinky toe, center of heel. And ask yourself, how does really emphasizing my foundation help to support me? As you push into your front foot, bend your knee, inhale, warrior two. Linger there, straighten your front leg, Turn the feet parallel to one another, working with that same technique we have been using. And go to the other side. So front heel pushes, pushes down and the toes turn out. Ball of foot of back foot pushes down, heel moves back a little. Warrior two, side angle. 
Now this time we'll take top hand to top hip and push into the trikonasana, just like you did on the other side. And as you pulse that a couple times, feel free to have the block under your front hand, which is my personal preference, or to take your hand onto your shin but really try to emphasize the weight into your feet rather than hand to shin. And as you go to that push to straight, it's almost like you're trying to push the floor away from you. And you're really emphasizing your connection to the tripod of front foot and the arches of your feet lifting. The next time you're in the trikonasana, pause there. You can lift your top arm up towards the ceiling and with this pause in the movement, emphasize the tripod of your back foot getting as equal as you can between the three legs. Pressing down through center of heel, ball of big toe, ball of pinky toe, and inviting that evenness, that equity into the sole of your foot to lift your arches. Bend your front knee, Inhale, lift into warrior two. And slowly straighten both legs to turn toes in. He, left heel presses down, toes lift and turn. Back toes, right toes press down, heel turns parallel. And then you might need to adjust your feet a little bit. So we'll start with that same series and add the half moon into it. And I'd like to have you do the turning of the feet in that same way if it works for you. Coming into the warrior two, tip to the side angle, push into the triangle. I like top hand on top hip for half moon. Lift your back leg up and reach your leg towards the sky. Then in really slow motion, bend your front leg. So you're lowering down, tip your back toe to the floor and lift your back leg and straighten your front leg. And do that a couple times. Bend your front leg deeply to lower your back foot to the floor. Push and lift back into the half moon. Try that one more time, really slow motion and push and lift back up. Now pause in the half moon. Even though your lifted leg is not connected to anything, can you press evenly through the three legs of the tripod? Try spreading your toes. To come out, bend your front knee, lower back foot in slow motion, push, lift up, change sides. Turn left toes out, bend your left knee for warrior to side angle. Look to the floor, press your front leg straight into trikonasana. Bend your front knee, shift the weight forward over front foot, lift into half moon. Now, if it works for you, bend your front knee, slowly lower your back, big toe to the floor, straighten your front leg, lift the back leg. Do that a couple times. It's a deep bend in your standing leg, knee, to bring that back foot low. So it's not just lowering the leg, the top leg, like I'm doing now. Instead, it's really using the front leg to lift and lower the back leg. It's a very different experience. Lower back foot to the floor, return to standing, feet parallel. So I'd like to do one more option with the half moon. And this one I like to do with my back against the wall. And so if you have a wall space that you can do this in, great. If you don't, you can do it without the wall or repeat what you just did. So if you have the wall space or feel really stable, step your front foot on the block. You will probably find it helpful to have a second block for your hand. And you're going to start from kind of a, a short warrior and leaning a little bit into the wall. Whoops, I'm a little too close with my block. Leaning a little bit into the wall, come into that half moon. Now this time when you bring your back big toe to the floor, it has a little farther to travel. And so your front leg has to do a little bit more work. And let's do anywhere from three to five of these on each side. So as it feels good to you, you either lower with your front foot on the block or on the floor to experiment what it's like 
to go even deeper into that front leg. If you haven't already, switch sides. Now my block that's under my front foot is a good you know, six or eight inches from the wall so that it doesn't feel like the wall is pushing me over. And I'm much shorter with my front foot and back foot positioning for the lifting because that feels more stable as I really focus on working the action of this front leg. As you do the same number or at least the same effort on both sides, notice if one side feels a little easier for you compared to the other side. As you finish the second side, whoo, my left leg gets tired faster. <laughs> Come back to your mat and have your feet wide apart. You won't need your blocks for this one. Feet wide apart in parallel. Inhale, reach your arms up like you're making a big X with your body. Exhale, right hand to left foot, twisting across. Inhale, lift up right. Exhale, left hand to right foot, twisting across. Inhale, lift up right to your X. Keep going. Coming back to the pattern where breath and movement combine. And is it possible for you to refine the way you combine breath and movement? So the breath begins a couple seconds before your movement does. So there'll be a little bit of inhale, and then you'll lift up right. There'll be a little bit of your exhale, and then you'll fold forward. It takes great concentration. And as simple as it sounds, it's actually quite challenging. The next time your right hand reaches towards your left foot, bring both hands for the foot and pause there for a few breaths. And notice how that feels for you in this moment. And can you connect to the tripod of each foot, especially the foot you're moving away from? Inhale up right, exhale other side. Both hands towards your right foot. And can you connect to the tripod of your back foot? pushing to the center of your heel, the base of the big toe, the base of your pinky toe, making all three points as even as you can. It's a little harder to connect to the back foot, the left one. Inhale, back up right. Interlace hands behind you, if that's okay, or even better, grab a strap Take it between your hands behind your back and hinge and fold. As you allow yourself to come to the center here for a moment, notice the relationship of your arms moving up overhead and the where that sends weight into your feet. Can you keep the tripod of your feet equal and even here? using ball of big toe, pinky toe, and center of heel equally. Push into your feet, inhale, lift your torso upright. Then you can set your strap to the side. Walk your feet towards one another. That heel toe slide is kind of a fun thing for the feet too. Now turn so you're facing the front of your mat and have your heels in a little and your toes out a little like we played with the wide-legged horse stance. And if it's comfortable for your knees, squat down to malasana. If there's something else that's uncomfortable for you, you can also skip this too. Like it could be an ankle thing. And so a couple options. You can be on the balls of your feet. You can have a little something under your heels. But however it is helpful for you to support yourself, I'll show with a blanket. You could also roll your sticky mat up if you don't have a blanket. But having a little heel lift, like modest wedge, or even higher if it's useful, 
Another way to support is to sit on a block. But can you feel into the tripod of your feet here? And I know in my body, I tend to rock to my outer heels in the malasana. Are you noticing some sort of asymmetry in your tripods? And maybe even one foot is really different than the other foot, which is common, especially if you've had like an ankle sprain or strain or any sort of kind of ligamentous tissue damage or injury. As you pause here for another breath or two, how does it feel to curl your chin to your chest, almost like you're a tortoise tucking your head into a shell? And I like to bring my hands low to the floor here for support. And when you're ready, take a seat on the floor. You can generally slowly uncurl curl your spine. And then like that tortoise curling in, roll to your back body, which is where you began with knees bent and soles of your feet on the floor. And as you pause here for a breath, do nothing except for notice. And as you notice, feel into the soles of your feet, the center of your heel, the base of your big toe, the base of your pinky toe. And come back to that inquiry. How are you supported? Our emphasis today, emphasis today was on how you're supported from your feet. But I encourage you to look at your life in general and identify the people or the practices or the places that help to support you. And when you're ready, push into the support of your feet and lift into a back bend, coming into bridge pose, the Satubanda Sarvangasana. As you press into your feet, is it possible to lift the balls of your feet on the, off the floor so it's just your heels pressing down? And then do the opposite. Press the balls of the feet down and lift your heels up like you're in the stilettos or high heels again. And try to rock back and forth between those a few times as you hold in the bridge pose. And then linger in one for a couple of breaths. What does it offer to you? What type of support does it give you? Linger in the other one for a few breaths and ask yourself, what does it offer you? What type of support does it give you? And then as you bring the whole sole of the foot to the floor, at least the three legs of the tripod, can you utilize both types of support, the ball of the foot and the heel at the same time? Or technically the balls of the feet, so the big toe and the pinky toe press down equally, and the heel also roots you into the earth. If you hold here for another couple breaths, can you utilize that support and notice what else is supporting you here? I definitely feel my glutes, my quads. What are you noticing? Slowly roll down one vertebrae at a time. With feet almost touching, you can keep your inner feet tucked together. Taking your arms out at shoulder height, can you twist both knees to one side so one foot is on the floor but the other foot lifts off? Twist back to center, go to the other direction. One foot is on the floor on the pinky edge and the other foot comes completely off the floor as it stays connected to the big toe side of the bottom foot. And do this a few times side to side. As you go side to side here, notice if your head wants to turn with or opposite your knees. And even as you stay connected to how your feet rock across the floor, the firm, the soft, the space, can you feel into the way your breath moves you here as well?
as you do this a couple more times, you could eventually transition to a slightly different twist or use a minute to do something else that would help your body. My body is asking me to do the spinal undulation movement that we started with, but you might want to do a pigeon pose or something else. And the spinal undulation, inhale, tilt to tailbone into the floor and feel your ribs arc a bit. Exhale, scoop low back to the floor and tailbone tips a little towards your knees. And try that a couple times if you choose or continue with where you feel moved to explore. Eventually this movement will come to a natural completion and you're invited to set up for Shavasana or a final relaxation pose. It could be done with legs straight, you can be on your belly or one side, or even lift up to seated. As you navigate into the setup that feels most comfortable for you, use whatever props or support is helpful. And I encourage you to ask yourself once again, what supports you? What are the characteristics and the quality of that support?
Slowly place your hands on your torso. Invite the support of the earth to hold you up. And invite your body to soften into that support. Gradually roll to one side. And use the bones of your arms to press your way up to seated. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. We'll chant the sound of Om one time together, honoring the support that is in your life. We'll take an inhale through nose, and then you'll exhale out through your mouth like you're fogging up a mirror. You'll inhale through your mouth and exhale the sound of Om. So inhale. Exhale. Inhale through your mouth. Oh. May you be supported so you in turn might support others in your life and in the world. Thanks so much for coming today to practice.